Hey guys, this is a follow-up lesson to um, our first lesson on writing, which we did together in class. So hopefully this video will help clear up any answers, um, but also explain the rest of the paragraph as you begin writing your final draft of the document. I first wanted to review the brainstorming box because I wanted you to see a little bit of the connection. Um, first, you have your lesson learned, which you were going to type somewhere in this box following these rules. Okay, And then you want to make sure that the quote that you choose is the element that you choose and that it's one of these for this box and one of these for this box. Okay, so you're not allowed to do two plot elements. You're not allowed to do two figurative language elements. You need to do one of both. And then once you figure out uh, which quote and elements you'd like to do, you have to make sure that those quotes then in turn prove your lesson learned. Now the lesson learned is part of, it's the second half of the topic sentence. So your topic sentence would say, in the Velt, Ray Bradbury uses imagery and characterization to reveal how and then this is where you plug in your lesson learned. So whatever you've just written up in this box with the star, you plug that in as the last little chunk of your topic sentence. Moving on to the next page, our homework the other night was to work on concrete detail number one and concrete detail number two, which is down here on the second page. Both of those come directly from the book. And because we're starting out um, for our first writing, we are using direct quotes. Now, eventually, later in the class, you will move towards paraphrasing. But for our first paragraph, we do a quote intro and a quote. And then we make sure that it's cited. And this is my example here um, for you guys based on yesterday's lesson. Commentary one needs to include an analysis of the example from the book that you just provided. So I'm going to read the directions and we'll go over how you should be forming it. As you write commentary one, remember it must refer back to the first element chosen while also remaining analytical. Let's go ahead and highlight that. For commentary two, students need to relate back to their lesson learn and avoid plot summary or further discussion of characters. Okay, so notes for commentary one. How does the use of this element reveal more about the lesson learned? What does it encourage readers to understand or explore? I'm noticing my own little typo here. Okay, so when we do our commentary one, it has to analyze whatever element you chose. So you either chose characterization or you chose conflict. Go ahead and write that out and then circle the one that you actually found the quote on in your box. I now have to analyze, and I'm going to draw a star next to this word. I have to analyze how that literary element, imagery, or I'm sorry, characterization or conflict has helped me make a connection to my theme statement, which is my lesson learned. What does it reveal about the lesson learned? And you're going to go ahead and type that here. In class, we'll be going over a sample together, um, so I'm not going to type it right now, but I want you to know that you want to avoid plot summary. You don't need to tell me what happens next in the story. Excuse me. Um, you need to make sure that you are giving analysis of how it furthers the lesson learned. Then commentary two which, sorry, this got bumped down to the next page. How does it further the theme? What does it apply to all humans? 
and what does it reveal about humanity? Now, both of the commentaries are only one sentence, but I try to give you questions that if answered correctly, give you the correct analysis. So when doing your commentary too, you wanna to keep it universal and analytical. And just like commentary one, we are avoiding all plot summary. This is your concrete detail too. This is your second example from the novel with a quote, introduction, and a uh, citation at the end. Make a little note. And then that takes us to the same commentary pattern, but proving that your concrete detail too, oops, messy arrow, is analyzing the theme. So you repeat the same pattern that we just went over for commentary one and two under concrete detail one for concrete detail number two. So now it's either, I believe, let me double check which ones I had listed for this story, foreshadowing, imagery, or symbolism. Okay. And so then you'd need to go in and circle which one you had chosen to write on. I apologize. My handwriting is looking a little messy. That wasn't any better. There we go. Okay. So as you choose, you have to double check your boxes, of course, making sure they actually prove your lesson learned. But first, in commentary one for concrete detail, Number two, you have to discuss the second element that was chosen and provide analysis of that actual element. What does the imagery help you imagine? What does the symbolism reveal? What does the foreshadowing allude to later in the story? And the commentary number two is once again that universal aspect. What does it reveal about humanity? How does this lesson apply to all humans? And that takes us to our last sentence, which is the conclusion sentence. So you want to reword your theme statement. Which is uh, the same thing as your lesson learn. I just like to use them interchangeable because students typically understand it better when I say lesson learned. So you want to reword it in a brand new way. A lot of times students like to use a thesaurus here. And then you want to add a strong ending focusing on what could be learned from the story. So I don't mind if your conclusion is one to two sentences long here. You want to include the author's name. The title a reworded theme or lesson learned. And then if you want to add one more sentence, you could wrap it up, make it feel finished. Um, and you can do that a little bit more creatively um, if you would like. Uh, that takes us to the end of just explaining the other sentences. In class, I'll be going over kind of like writing do's and don'ts as well as a sample for you guys. Um, but I just wanted to work through the packet, kind of get it here on video so you could rewind, pause, and rewatch as you need. Hopefully this helps, and of course, make sure you're logging into tutoring hours or unmuting yourself and asking questions in class. Um, or of course, you can send me a Schoology message. Awesome. Thanks, guys.